Hey everybody, this is Mr. V and this is Apes Review video topic 8.5 on eutrophication. So this is an important one, so please make sure you pay attention. So we mentioned eutrophication a couple times um, in previous PowerPoints, but to make sure to remember, eutrophication this idea when you end up with way too many nutrients, right? You can have cultural eutrophication, which is caused by us, and of course natural eutrophication, which is caused just by the natural ecosystem and the way it works. So it, both systems, whether they're natural or anthropogenic, work the same way. So how this works is you end up with high nutrients coming in from a source, right? And that leads to an algal bloom. That's this green stuff in the picture. So the algae, algae bloom, right, gets big numbers, and then eventually they die. And the microbes that digest the algae, they end up eating a bunch of the oxygen, and it gets used up. And so that drops our dissolved oxygen levels down further and further and further. This leads to, make sure you know these two words, either a hypoxic, or an anoxic environment. Hypoxic means low oxygen, anoxic means without any oxygen at all. This leads to a fish kill. That's why a fish like this is not doing so well, because eutrophication has occurred. Now, if it's cultural eutrophication, those resources, those sources can be have to be come from human, have to come from humans. Um, if it's natural, then that's a typical uh, cycle that occurs often. So one point to make is something the kids always mess up on, is everybody always thinks that the O comes out of H2O, right? So if you look at these molecules here, this is hydrogens with a couple of those double bonded oxygens in the middle of them, right? And so what that means is you end up having, so if you look right here, these are your oxygens, those double bonds, okay? So what that means is those oxygens, they don't, you don't breathe the O from H2O. What instead you do is the oxygen dissolves in. That's why, like, if you have a fish tank at home and there's bubbles, the bubble pops and the oxygen in the air falls down into the water in there, right? And that's become dissolved oxygen. Well, um, in a low oxygen or hypoxic or anoxic environment, that's going to be a situation where all the oxygen is consumed and gone, and that means there's not going to be anything left for the fish to breathe. Now, typically, cold water holds a lot more oxygen, than warm water, um, and that's going to be important in future PowerPoints to think about as well. So when we hear the word eutrophic, that means high nutrients, right? So that leads to, that's typically from our faults, um, you know, from our resources such as agriculture, uh, building, sedimentation, stuff like that. Um, then you can get oligotrophic. So think about history when they talked about uh, oligarchs. Oligarchs means very few people in charge. Well, oli oligotrophic in uh, our form of uh, science is going to be meaning that it has very few nutrients. So oligotrophic, very few, that's clear water. Eutrophic, a lot of nutrients tend to be very green, like that one on the right side. And then, of course, here's what we're talking about, cultural eutrophication, agricultural runoff, wastewater release, anything that leads to high amounts of sediments and nutrients getting into the water, that's going to lead to that anthropogenic or cultural eutrophication. So here's some more sources to look into. Um, hopefully they'll be helpful, and hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much.